I've been using the M1 Mac Mini for about three months now, and last night I finally put my 16 inch MacBook Pro on eBay. And there are several reasons why the M1 Mac Mini forced me to do that. Welcome back to Mark Ellis Reviews. Thank you for subscribing if you have. If you haven't, just click that button. Like so many people, I have now decided to sell my 16 inch MacBook Pro. And that's a real surprise, because again, like those other people, I had intended on using that machine for three, four, maybe even five years. Then Apple launched the M1 chip and literally everything changed. I started off with an M1 MacBook Air, which I've still got and still love. And then I found the M1 Mac Mini and bought it as a bit of an experiment, to be honest, partly for, for you guys, so I'll give you some insight into what that machine's like, but I never expected it to completely replace my 16 inch MacBook Pro, but it has. And I'm three months now into using this little computer. I think that puts me in quite a good position now to talk to you guys about what I like about it and one or two things I'm not quite so happy about. When it comes to performance, if you've watched this channel before, you'll know that I don't do benchmarks. I personally don't find them very interesting at all. I just don't think they reflect real world usage. So I'd much rather go on how these things work throughout the day, how they make me feel, if they make me, more, make me more productive, if they help me make more money as I'm running a business. And the M1 Mac Mini is hands down the best computer I have owned for that task. The performance on this thing is, is just epic. Now I've got the 16 gig of RAM version with 512 gig storage and it just breezes through the day. I'm a video editor, you know, I do some audio production as well. I do lots of writing, I do lots of Teams calls and it just never sweats, it never gets hot, I've never heard the fan come on. One of the things which has kind of made me realize just how powerful and how brilliant this M1 chip is, is that I'm in a place now where I don't worry about closing apps. You know, I used to, no matter what computer I was using, even the 16 inch MacBook Pro, I'd always be thinking about what's running in the background. You know, I didn't want things to be hogging resources and stealing memory from what I need to be focusing on. For some reason with the M1 machines, you just don't think about it anymore. It becomes this thing where you just leave stuff open and like I say, you just don't think about it. And when I say leave things open, I mean, I'm leaving Final Cut Pro running in the background along with Photoshop, Lightroom, Logic sometimes as well, and whatever it's doing with memory management, because 16 gig of RAM, as lots of people will say, isn't traditionally a lot of memory for those kind of tasks. It's just incredible. I'm not, I'm absolutely knocked sideways by it. Now it's not for everyone. The M1 Mac Mini won't be for really heavy duty users. You know, if you're editing 8K video, if you're a, a developer who works on very intensive projects. Also, if you are a music producer, the M1 at the moment, and this is obviously applies to all the M1 machines. At the moment, when it comes to music production, I'm gonna cover this at some stage. There are quite a few compatibility issues with plugins and, and soft synths and things. You know, people who do lots of graphics intensive stuff, you can't change the graphics card in this because there's, there's no such thing. It's just embedded in the M1 chip and there's no other options apart from the eight core graphics with the, with the M1 Mac Mini. But regardless of all of that stuff, the Mac Mini, as it has always been, is just a brilliant entry into the Mac OS ecosystem. Bluetooth issues, very quick one on this. So when I first got my M1 Mac Mini, I was having no end of Bluetooth problems. My third party peripherals, so things like mechanical keyboards, would not connect. I was even having issues with Apple stuff. So for example, my AirPods Pro, they just kept disconnecting. You couldn't connect them at all sometimes. I even switched to the Apple keyboard. That didn't work. I used the Apple trackpad. And just very weird things started to happen in this studio in terms of Bluetooth connectivity. Then Mac OS 11.2 was released. And for me, it has pretty much completely fixed those issues. So Bluetooth for me now works okay. The only thing that is still a bit of a problem is this MX Master Mouse from Logitech. I still have to use the dongle for this. It basically comes with a little dongle that you plug into the USB-A port at the back and it works pretty well with that. It occasionally stutters occasionally now and again, but if I try and connect this via USB, it's terrible. It stutters across the screen, it sometimes stops working completely. Whether or not that is an in inherent problem with the Logitech Mouse and Max, I don't know. If it's still related to the Bluetooth issue with the M1 Mac Mini, who knows? But I'm conscious as well that I do occasionally get comments on the videos and also on my Medium blogs where people say, look, I'm still having issues with, with Bluetooth. Latest Mac OS up, update is on and it's still a problem. I think they're fairly few and far between and unless you're using lots of different external peripherals that are Bluetooth, I think you'll be okay, but it's just worth bearing in mind. SSD where, again, a very quick point on this, I did cover this in, in another video, which I'll link to above. There has been some concern in the kind of Apple ecosystem 
tech world that the M1 machines that only have eight gig of RAM are doing a lot of what's called SSD swapping. So basically that means because there's only eight gig of RAM, they have to use the SSD, the, you know, the storage drive, to act as RAM, basically. That's a terrible explanation of it and you can laugh at me in the comments. Basic fact is, it's putting more strain on the SSD. Now, the benchmarks that were done for this, one of them showed 3% drive wear in about 12 weeks or something. And when you looked at how much data that person had been transferring backwards and forth on their built-in SSD on their M1, I think it was an M1 MacBook Pro, it was epic levels of data transfer. You know, I think in the same period, I've used probably 2% of what they use, and I edit 4K video and all sorts. There obviously is an issue there, but my advice with this remains, don't worry about it. It's not widespread, and I think for most general users, you're not going to experience excessive SSD wear that you're ever aware of in your lifetime with that computer. If you are worried, get the 16 gig version. If it's something that really bothers you and you know you're gonna be doing loads and loads of transferring, I, st I still don't know who does that and what you have to do to get into that situation. But if you're worried about it, just get the 16 gig. It's an upgrade that's just worth it for peace of mind alone. The other thing that the M1 Mac Mini has got me into is other peripherals. So I had to buy a monitor, obviously, and I went for an MSI 34 inch widescreen monitor. I've reviewed that and talked about it in this video up here somewhere, and it's brilliant, I love it. Also, it's really got me into mechanical keyboards. Again, I'll leave a video link in the description to my uh, kind of analysis of these things. And like I mentioned earlier, I've got the MX Master Logitech mouse. And because the M1 Mac Mini just comes as the box, you don't, you get a power cable and that's it basically. It forces you to buy other things to make it a full computer. And I've really enjoyed that. I've, I've genuinely enjoyed building this setup. And I was worried about giving up the 5K screen on the, the iMac behind me. I still use that occasionally, but I don't miss it. The M1 Mac Mini forces you to buy this stuff. This entire setup for me was about 1500 pounds. The 16 inch MacBook Pro that I bought back in 2019 was three and a half thousand. And this is a better setup. It's a satisfyingly un-Apple world, which is an odd thing for me to say when everything else I have is Apple, but it's nice to get into other things that aren't made by Apple because it really broadens your horizons. In one way, it's a great reason to buy the M1 Mac Mini. Now the M1 machines are limited to quite a basic set of ports. So you only get two USB-A ports and two Thunderbolt slash USB-C ports. Before I bought the M1 Mac Mini, I, I didn't think that was gonna be an issue. It is. I've completely maxed them all out. Obviously I've connected the monitor via HDMI. I then connected a webcam via USB-A. I've had to connect the dongle for this via USB-A. I have a set of speakers on my desk which are connected via USB-A as well. I then have a hub that I'm using that, that the Mac Mini sits on top of. More on that soon. That connects via Thunderbolt. And then I have my SanDisk external SSD which connects via Thunderbolt as well. Oh, and I have my iFi Zendac, my little headphone amp, that connects via USB-A. Now you don't have to be a mathematician to work out that I've completely used up all the ports there and then some on the M1 Mac Mini. And it is a bit of a pain. And, and these little hubs are, I think I mentioned this in a video a little while ago, that they're, they're interesting devices. They make the M1 Mac Mini look a little bit like a special edition if you like. But it's, it's a bit of a shoehorned attempt to get more ports on a machine that should have the ports by default. Apple have never said anything about this, but there's a lot of kind of suggestions that they might have done it purely just to cripple the machine to make you want to buy the next version. Or it might just be the fact that the M1 chip can't handle any more throughput than it, it's got with these you know, four ports, basically. It's been a problem for me. I, I, I do, I like a tidy desk. And the problem is now that I have this ugly cable sticking out the front of the hub that goes into the Logitech webcam. It's just a bit of a mess, really. As I've got older, I've become one of these guys who just wants out of the box convenience. I want to get something out of the box and just use it. I don't want to keep adding things to it to make it better. All I want is four USB-A ports, four Thunderbolt ports, and that SD card reader, which is just so important from my perspective and, and lots of other creators. I think for many users, the lack of ports isn't gonna be an issue, to be honest, and some people don't mind using dongles. The fact that the M1 Mac Mini is a desktop computer, you can hide that stuff behind it. So I'm, I'm, I'm probably being a little bit picky here, but if you're a bit like me and you like just to have a machine that has built-in connectivity and quite a lot of it, it might be worth just waiting a little bit just to see what Apple announces this year. So in conclusion, this is still, despite the problems I've mentioned, and the problems I've mentioned during this review are, they're little things really, it's not big stuff. Even the Bluetooth issue, the, for me it's been fixed. If it hasn't been fixed for you, I'm sorry to hear that. Let me know in the comments. But for me, that has been fixed. It's absolutely my favorite M1 device. I love the M1 MacBook Air but there's something about this M1 Mac Mini, the fact that it has so effortlessly replaced that 16 inch MacBook Pro and become the hub of my business 
is just so impressive for me. And don't listen to the people that say that you can't use this for pro work. I've, I've had that a little bit in the comments and I don't accept that. I'm using this to run a business and it works brilliantly. Like I say, it's the best computer I've had in that respect. However, if you want more connectivity, more ports, if you want to get more RAM than 16 gig, if you'd love the idea of being able to spec up the graphics, for example, wait, don't buy yet. There's been no word in terms of when we're gonna see the next Mac mini, for example, or what else Apple might do to give us something else desktop related that isn't the really expensive Mac Pro, but something's gonna happen. You know, there's a new iMac on the way. If you're tempted by the, the Mac mini, but you just, there's elements of it that I've mentioned today that you're thinking it's not quite right, if you can wait, wait. That said, it's important to remember that this M1 Mac Mini starts at just 699. It's such a low cost entry into the Mac OS ecosystem. So if you've got that kind of money, if it's a business purchase and you just want to try it out and see if it works for your business, you trust me, you will not be disappointed. If you're ready to place the order for your M1 Mac Mini, make sure you keep watching for a link to a buying guide that I've done for that computer. And in the meantime, as always, thank you so much for watching. I'll catch you next time.